وسع ربي كل شيء علما أفلا تتذكرون الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters Inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go into the fourth uh, point uh, that I wanted to go through uh, for the students of knowledge uh, who are studying at the AMAU uh, Student of Knowledge Program. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, in today's fourth mas'ala, the fourth point, inshallah ta'ala, will be about the, the distresses uh, and the, also the obstacles that you will endure while seeking knowledge. These are concerns and yani, stresses that student of knowledge go through through the course of their studying. Either you've gone through some of these distresses or some of them you're going through now or some of them you're going to see them in the future. Some of those distresses, inshallah ta'ala, uh, are not going to occur again in your life. Alhamdulillah, you've overcome it. And some of them, you will see them consistently come up. It will never leave you whilst you're seeking knowledge, rather whilst you live in this earth. But what we can do, inshallah ta'ala, is to prescribe for you that which we believe, inshallah ta'ala, to be the cure for it. Before I start, inshallah ta'ala, I want to say, my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created us. And He created all creations. And the human beings, Allah wa ta'ala, when He created them, He created them in the best of form, subhanahu wa ta'ala, fi ahsani taqweem. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem, alladhi khalaka, alladhi khalaqaka, the one who created you, fasawaka fa'adalak. He straightened you, he also subhanahu wa ta'ala, created you upright, uh, proportioned you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, في أي صورة ما شاء ركبك، and in the form that you are right now, he is the one who made you uh, this way. You're beautiful. You're remarkable in the way that you're created. Nothing in this earth can replace a part of your body. The way Allah created it and the way it functions and the way it is, there is nothing on this earth that humans can give you that can give you, for example. A functioning finger the way that this finger works Or an eye or your ear, etc Also Allah Ta'ala, He says لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ That we created uh, man in the best uh, form Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala And the beauty my brothers and sisters Of the creating of the human beings Is that Allah wa Ta'ala created us from limbs Every single one of those limbs has a purpose and things that it does. And all of those limbs, my brothers and sisters, has one organ that controls it all. If that organ gets affected, the entirety of the body is also affected with it. And that is the heart, my brothers and sisters. The heart is, as the scholars, they say, it is medical bedan. It is medical a'da. Uh, the noble Sahabi Abu Huraira, what did he used to say? He said, al-qalbu medical a'da. That the heart is the uh, is the king of the body. And the limbs are its soldiers. The general is the heart. The commander is the heart. And the entire body, it follows the uh, general. It follows the commander. If the king or the leader, the commander, he is strong, he is motivated, driven. He will also impact his soldiers. وَإِنْ خَبُثَ الْمَلِكِ خَبُثَتِ الْجُنُودُ وَالرَّعَيَا And if the king is weak and he is distressed, then the entire army that he has will also be affected by that. And this hadith, my brothers and sisters, or this point goes in line with the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, that Imam al-Bukhari narrated in his sahih. The Prophet told us, there is a limb inside the human body. 
If it's upright, the entire body is also upright. When fasadat, fasad al jasadu kullu, ala wa al qalb. And if it's right and it's good and it's noble, the whole entire body is. If it's corrupt, the entire body is also corrupt. So, why am I mentioning all of this? Because the point of distress, I mean, the concern that we might have when it comes to distress, it comes from the heart. And if the heart is sad, depressed, and you're distressed, it affects the entire body. It affects your think thinking. It affects your walking. It affects your, your, your standing. It affects your movements. You just want to be in one position. You just want to be sleeping. Or you just want to eat and go. You just don't want to do anything. The heart is a very powerful organ. Allah Ta'ala, He tells us that the power of the heart, that the day of judgment when it comes, the Prophet said, That the day of judgment, money and children and wealth and whatever you had will not benefit. What would benefit is the heart. Again, the power of the heart. I want you to all pay attention with me. I'm coming to a point. This is not just a lecture on a muhadara. I'm trying to come to a point, which is that a student of knowledge who is studying always has to understand the importance of the heart and how it should be protected. The power of the heart and how you need to take care of your heart when you're studying, when you're learning. And you be careful of the daqaiq uh, al-ahwal al-qalbiyya, the detailed matters of the heart. This is a fiqh which the scholars, they call it, they say this is min fiqh al one of the greatest fiqh of a student of knowledge. To understand the heart and its reality and what can affect it and what can't affect it, what can be an obstacle for it from seeking knowledge or attaining any righteous actions as well. Sa'adatu al-darayn, the happiness of this world and the hereafter. It really comes back to, as Al-Imam ibn Qudama mentions in his great book, Minhaj al-Qasidin, is that it's the heart. Also before him, uh, Abu al-Faraj ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah mentions it. So your heart, my brothers and sisters, will suffer if you don't take care of it. And now what happens, brothers and sisters, is that when the heart suffers, a lot of people go about finding the solution in the wrong ways. And they're trying to find the cures in the wrong places. And my brothers and sisters, what we say is that which Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said. He says, وَالْكُلُّ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَالسُّنَنِ الَّتِي جَاءَتْ عَنِ الْمَبْعُوثِ بِالْفُرْقَانِ وَاللَّهِ مَا قَالَ مُرُؤٌ مُتَحَذْلِقٌ بِسِوَاهُمَا إِلَّا مِنَ الْهَذَيَانِ وَالْكُلُّ فِي الْقُرْآنِ Everything that is in the Qur'an and the Sunnah, it really brings happiness. It is a solution for all problems. The Qur'an has cures and it has every issue we need to know. The Qur'an and the Sunnah has a solution. وَالْكُلُّ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَالسُنَنِ الَّتِي جَاءَتْ عَنِ الْمَبْعُوثِ بِالْفُرْقَانِ Wallahi ibn al-Qayyim swears in this is his nuniya. He says, Wallahi ma qala mru'un mutahadliqun. There is not a person who speaks and he, and he vocalizes his points. Bisiwahuma illa min al hadayani. And he speaks without the Quran and the Sunnah backing him in what he's saying, except that what he speaks is nonsense. He has no basis to it. My brothers and sisters, students of knowledge, tulab al ilm. I want you to pay attention to this. The heart strives to two things. This is all the heart goes back to. It strives to two things. The heart is trying to attain two things. The first thing is talabu marghub. You're looking for something you want. That's number one. The heart is trying to get something. Seeking knowledge is what is something you're trying to attain. And the second one is khawfu marhub. The heart is trying to run away from. Something it fears and it doesn't want. It's trying to avoid something it doesn't want. That is the reality. You're trying to get something and you're trying to avoid something. What we're trying to achieve is good. And we're trying to achieve يعني, methods and ways to stay away from that which is harmful. And so the person's heart, when it comes to طَلَبُ مَرْغُوبٍ أو خوف مرغوب, This is where the distress and the distress comes from. You were trying to get something, you couldn't get it, you feel sad. You were scared of something might happen or you were running away from something and you fell into it. And you are now just stressed and saddened by it. So the word that the scholars use for uh, stress and they refer to it is alhammu. That word alhammu in Arabic 
is the word that the scholars use. But by the way, the word alhammu is it's a root word for the two polar opposites of something. In Arabic language, you will see words that when you look at them, they have the two polar opposites in that one word. For example, the word alwara in Arabic, wara. Sometimes the word wara can be behind, which is what it's normally understood as everybody else. Everybody will say, what, what does the word wara, wara means? They understand it is, means the back or behind. But the same word wara comes in the Quran as in the front. As Allah said in the Quran, وَكَانَ وَرَاهُمْ مَلِكٌ يَأْخُذُ كُلَّ سَفِينَةٍ غَصْبًا In Surah Tukath. In front of them there was a king that was taking people's ships and boats. So that same word was used as what? The back and the, the front. There's many words like that in the Quran. The word ham sometimes comes as, uh, and it's used as high aspiration. هَمٌ تَقْوَى بِهِ النَّفْسِ They say. وَيَجْذِبُهَا لِلْوُصُولِ إِلَى مَقَاصِدِهَا It's the, it's, Aspiration, high aspiration. The word hamniya means that which strengthens the heart, enforces the heart and allows you to reach your goal. The second type is a uh, ham which weakens the nafs. Hamun tab'ufu bihi nafs and it stops and prevents it from attaining and achieving what it wants. As for that first type of ham, which is what we call high aspirations, is not what I'm going to be talking about. Methods and ways to attain high aspiration, I'm not going to be focusing on that. What I'm going to be talking about is distress, discomfort, sadness that you will endure and feel in the course of your studying and, and acquiring and attaining the knowledge of Al-Islam. That's what I'm going to be fo focusing on. Brothers, I first of all want to say to you that this world that you live in, the way that its creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it is that it's going to be filled with distress. A lot of people are sad and heartbroken when you speak to them and you have a dialogue with them. You tend to find that their perception and their understanding of the reality of the world is different to the way Allah describes it in the Quran and the way that the Messenger والسلام, puts it in the Sunnah. And what is the difference? They've understood from this world to be very lavish, very happy, comfortable, joyful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather speaks about this world as a test. Allah talks about the Quran, this world as a place where he's testing trials and tribulations. So the happiness shouldn't be the default position in this world. What should be the default position in this world is trials and tribulations. And that the happiness that you go through in this world, the happiness that you feel are just small يعني, breads that are being thrown to you. يعني, that small opening. But that's not the, 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 the default position, brothers and sisters. That's what Allah says in the Quran subhanahu wa ta'ala لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ What does the word kabad actually mean? We, we, we all know this surah, surah al-balad, right? لَا أُقْسِمِ بِيَوْمِ لَا أُقْسِمِ بِهَذَا الْبَلَدْ Allah mentions in there لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ What does the word kabad mean, my brother? So a lot of people, if they understood the perception of the real, this world, they had a correct understanding of this world, they understood its reality. As Allah mentioned in surah al-balad, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ And the word Al-Kabad, it means أي فِي عَنَاءٍ وَمَشَقَّةٍ Allah is actually saying, I created the human beings through hardship and uh, يعني, I created them in this world as, as, يعني, with hardship and distress and discomfort. So that's what the dunya is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator and the sustainer. I want to ask you guys a question, inshaAllah ta'ala, and I want you to answer this to yourself. You don't have to say anything loud so the people around you can hear you, but just say it to yourself, inshaAllah ta'ala, which is, if a company was to make a product and they told the people this product that they made is actually faulty. There's a lot of faults in it and there's problems in it. Stop using it. Would the people take that from them? See how I said to you that the, the uh, creators of this product or the makers of this product or the manufacturers of this product they are saying to you, it's faulty. I didn't say they're praising it because people falsely praise their stuff. But I'm saying they're criticizing it. And they're saying it's faulty and it has problems. They come out and they say that. Would you believe it? Of course you would. Without a shadow of a doubt, you'll take it from them. iPhone came out and said to you, all of our phones are uh, faulty. We found a problem in it. Uh, and uh, all of you go and return back your phones to us. Everybody would go back and return their phones and get a refund. Because the manufacturer is saying, the company who made it are saying this. 
Allah Azza wa Jalla and as Allah said in the Quran وَلَا يُنَبِّئُكَ مِثْلُ خَبِيرٌ No one can inform you the way Allah can subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلَ وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثًا Who is more truthful than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is saying I created this dunya and this world is hardship it's, 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 it's cold it's, it's tough it's rough it's not easy how are you not taking it from him subhanahu wa ta'ala and how are you not believing him in that there's a hadith I want you to all students of knowledge this is for you because a lot of you guys might drop out and say I'm stressed I can't do it it's hard it's tough just listen to these hadiths and these quotes I give you and inshallah ta'ala really think about what you are saying the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam he said in a hadith Ibn Majah narrated on the authority of Muawiyah ibn Abu Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet said لَمْ يَبْقَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا بَلَاءٌ وَفِتْنَةٌ Nothing remains in this dunya except بَلَاءٌ وَفِتْنَةٌ Trials and tribulations, turmoil, calamities, anarchy, all of that. This is what the dunya is. وَلِذَلِكَ There's a line of poetry that you tend to find Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah nearly every single moment he speaks he tends to bring up this line of poetry a lot it's one of those poetries he says so much Ibn Taymiyyah it was said by Abu Hassan At-Tihami Rahimahullah Ibn Taymiyyah he uses this a lot because Ibn Taymiyyah went through a lot of trials and tribulations in the course of his life so he says the following he said طُبِعَتْ عَلَىٰ كَدَرٍ وَأَنْتَ تُرِيدُ وَأَنْتَ تُرِيدُ صَفْوًا مِنَ الْأَكْدَارِ وَالْأَقْدَارِ this world, Allah, the way He created it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that it's filled with hardship. And you want it far from any filth. You want this world to be so clean and good. You want it to be so smooth. And the poet is saying, Do you know what tubi'at means? It means it was created with it the word tabi'a natural the world has naturally been made in the way that allah created it is that it's stuck to it cannot be detached from hardship toughness rough that's what it is brothers and sisters and then look what the poet said and you on the other hand to read safwan you want it cleaned and separated from what from hardship and discomfort and look at the, the days and the nights are different to it. He said, fil ma'i tanari. This world, Ibn Taymi used to use that line of poetry because Ibn Taymi, rahimahullah, he spent a very long time of his life when he came to seeking knowledge and after he sought knowledge, rahimahullah ta'ala, he suffered a lot. Even after he sought knowledge in conveying the message of Islam, he suffered, rahimahullah ta'ala. And I encourage you all to read the likes of those scholars to really understand, are you going through a lot? Are you really suffering? Are you really seeing a hardship? The answer is no. And the ending he says, the poet says, and obligating runs from the days. What is against is uh, what is against its nature. It is like searching water for a burning uh, log. Also, a powerful statement that really hits is that Fathul Musili rahimahullah ta'ala is one of Ahadul Ubad. And I want you to think of this statement of his. He said, Kunna qawman min ahlil jannah. I want you to think how he, his perception of the world is and the way that we look at it. He said, Kunna qawman min ahlil jannah. We were a people of jannah. We were from the people of jannah. And guess what? Fasabana Iblis. We were from the people of jannah, then Iblis brought us out as captives. The word fasabana is that shaitan came and he struck, he caused us to leave Jannah. We left Jannah because of shaitan. How can we be happy and enjoy ourselves? There's nothing left for us except distress and discomfort. We were taken out of Jannah. We're in a place lower than Jannah. Where can happiness come to us? And then he said, only happiness would come حَتَّى نُرَدَّ إِلَى الدَّارِ الَّتِي أُخْرِجْنَا مِنْهَا we are only going to be happy when we are brought back to the place that we were taken from. Someone brought you out of a very luxurious life that you had and brought you to a very low life. For the rest of your life, you're going to always feel that in your heart. Huh? 
You shouldn't laugh and smile because you're going to think, or you, people are going to look at you and say, why is he smiling for? Sah. Ma baluka, what then do you think if you were taken out from Jannah and the one that took you out of Jannah is Shaytan, Iblis, alayhi la'inullah. And he took you the out, as he said, يعني, as a captive, meaning he used you against your sins, which is a form of captivation, a, a captive, uh, made you a captive of your own sins. يعني, due to your sins, you became captive, a captive. Then how do you then expect, inshallah ta'ala, to be happy in a world that is not Jannah? So Jannah, my brothers and sisters, is where happiness, inshallah, will be. That's where, inshallah ta'ala, we ask Allah wa ta'ala to make us from its people. Bidhanillahi al kareem Now, brothers and sisters, I want to go through causes of distress in general. And then I'm going to speak about the student of knowledge specifically. Okay. One of the things that cause distress is uh, the natural way that Allah created the human beings is a cause for us to be distressed. Because sometimes we want things which Allah did not will for us to have it. And sometimes we are running away from which we are scared of and that is also uh, going to come and happen to us. So naturally, the nafs has been made to feel sad when it doesn't get what it wants. And it's naturally been made to fear what it was running away from. In other words, we're comfortable with so many things, right? That's what Allah says in the Quran. The human is created with fear and discomfort and all of that. If good comes his way, he's happy. If sadness comes his way, he's sad and he's heartbroken by it. And then the first reason why people are sad and heartbroken is, we have to be honest and say, The nafs was made like that. It's not an external factor necessarily at the first point. It's something that the nafs is. Second is, The whispers of shaitan. Shaitan puts that fear in you sometimes, which causes distress. Remember we said distress comes from how many things? Two things generally. It's good that you're looking for and something you're running away from. So shaitan places fear in you. That's what Allah said in the Quran. إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاهُ So he, he places fear in you and makes you scared. How does he do that? He says to you, Ooh, this money of yours that you have and you want to give it out in sadaqah. You're going to struggle. You're not going to get that money back. And this and that. That's what Allah says in the Quran. Shaytan, he gives you this belief that you're going to be poor. The student of knowledge, you're going to be, he brings that يعني, poverty in front of your eyes. Shaytan, and then he commands you evil and that which is not good. So there's many verses in the Quran that, that mention that. So the Poverty, brothers and sisters, that shaitan brings to you is that which goes against contentment. In your heart, you feel, I don't have anything. How am I going to seek knowledge? Inshallah ta'ala, we're going to talk about those distresses for the student of knowledge, inshallah ta'ala. The second one is thoughts that people have. It's called istirsalu fil khawatir. It's jawalanu al khawatir. The person sits down and he thinks about things and then it saddens him. That's something you should also avoid. Some people, they sit back and they think about life and they remember moments and things, what people said to them and all of that. Don't reverse, don't drive in reverse, as they say, yeah? Don't bring out the dead from their graves. And what's happened in the past has happened. There's nothing you can really do about it. Drive forward. Go forward, sah? Yeah, and what is written in the, what was written has taken place. What has What's happened in the past has already happened. You cannot really do anything about it. As, as they say, it's crying over spilled milk. You can't do anything about it. And the future, again, it's not in your hands. Just think about the present and what you're living in. And brothers and sisters, I really want to point this out. Sadness comes from the past that you thought about and your heart broken of what happened. And sometimes the future that you really want to know, I want to do this, I want to do this. And you keep thinking about the future, it distresses you. You fear the past and what happened. And the future that you're, that's in front of you, that, that you're, 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 
your, 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 you want it. Your, I want this, I want that, I want to become like this, I want to become like that. And it distresses you. It puts weight on you. Don't live the future. Think about the present right now. Focus on that, inshallah ta'ala. The future will unfold itself in the Layl Kareem. Another reason that causes uh, distress, my brothers and sisters, is takatharul fitan. When the trials and tribulations increase, and that's what's happening online, and social media, and in our day-to-day -day life, what we're seeing on the streets and everything, it's a time of fitna that we're living in, sah? So this also causes it. Another reason why distress increases, my brothers and sisters, is lack of knowledge of what causes problems to avoid it. A lot of people don't. So they go towards things that cause problems, which the scholars call musabbibatul humum. The causes of distress, they go towards those things, and then after they find out that these things are what caused it. I encourage everybody who can read the Arabic language, and inshallah ta'ala, you can go back to this video after you have gained great knowledge, inshallah ta'ala, in the AMAU project, in the AMAU student knowledge program. You can go back to this video again and watch it and read this book. Now that you've learned the Arabic language and etc. The Kitab Bada'i Al Fawaid by Ibn al Qayyim. Ibn al Qayyim has very beautiful statements on the issue of distress and sadness. And he also has a beautiful, beautiful discussion in the fourth volume of his Kitab Zad al Ma'ad. Ibn al Qayyim has a good discussion on the cures of distress, the cures of it. Inshallah ta'ala, if Allah gives me the time and the life, uh, inshallah ta'ala, go through it bin al kareem. What are the cures to distress? The cures is to distress, my brothers and sisters, is two. It's called al-adwiya to shariya and al-adwiya to al-qadariya. Al-adwiya to shariya is al-mawsufah fi khitab al shara that which the shari'a has prescribed. The shari'a has told us about it. That's the first one. That's called what? It's called the, uh, the cures that are yani, uh, prescribed by the Sharia. Ah. The second one is called Al-Adwa Al-Qadariya. It is not prescribed by the Sharia, ah, but it's prescribed by the specialists, doctors and those who know. And they've based it on what? They have based it on experience and they've based it on tajrubah, that which they saw, the outcome, and etc. I'm going to quickly go through the Sharia. Ah, the prescription it gave you, the prescription of the Sharia. If you follow all of these, inshallah ta'ala, uh, I promise you, inshallah ta'ala, I promise you, you will not feel a lot of sadness that you felt in your life. Now, there's a difference between uh, sadness and distress or depression and anxiety. Every human being goes through that moment of sadness. But when you come with these things, you're going to cure it. As soon as it comes, you're going to get rid of it, inshallah ta'ala. The first one is at tawheed Singling Allah in worship subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, Tanzihu Rabbi an Zulm. Stripping, exalting Allah tabarak wa ta'ala from oppression. There are many people when they go through hardship, they, they oppress Allah by saying, it's his fault. Why did he do this to me? What did I do wrong? The third one is, I'tirafu al-abdi bitafriqihi. I'tirafu al-abdi bitafriqihi. Recognizing that this all happened because of your shortcomings. Pointing the finger at yourself. That, that makes you a submissive slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who have mercy on you. The next one is وَتَوَسُّرُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ To turn towards Allah tabarak wa ta'ala بِأَسْمَائِهِ الْحُسْنَى وَصِفَاتِهِ الْعُلَى Turning to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala with His majestic, noble names and attributes. The next one is وَاسْتِعَانَتُهُ بِهِ وَتَوَكُّلُهُ عَلَيْهِ وَرَجَعُهُ إِيَّهِ Asking Allah for help. Relying on Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next one is وَالرَّعْتُ فِي رِيَاضِ الْقُرْآنِ Reciting the book of Allah and becoming the friend, a companion of the Quran. The next one is al-istighfar wa tawbah, asking Allah for forgiveness and repenting from your mistakes and your shortcomings. Al-jihad wa salah, striving in the cause of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and what that word means. And also the prayer. Al-bara'atu min al-hawli wa al-quwa, staying away from thinking that everything that happens is because of your own hard work and your efforts. No, nothing is what, the good that you get is not because of your hard work, it's because of Allah. The next one is al-du'a wa dhikr supplicating to Allah and consistently remember, remembering Him. The next benefit is, Put your heart towards what is beneficial. Ignore the things that are unnecessary, game and time wasting, forget all of that. Bring your heart and your mind to that which is beneficial for you. The next one is, Don't preoccupy yourself with that which has happened in the past. Drive forward. 
The next one is وَحُسْنُ ظَنِّ بِاللَّهِ Think good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also وَشُهُودُ الْمِنَّةِ الرَّبَّانِيَّ Always remember the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on you. بِتَكْفِيرِ الْخَطَايَ بِالْهَمِّ وَالْغَمِّ Always remember that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done for you and the great blessings that you have had. It was mentioned about Ayyub alayhi salam when he had went, when he went through the hardship that he went through. He said, I feel shy to ask my Lord for cure from the problem that I'm going through because how many years has he given me? How long has he given me subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, a, uh, a healthy body and mind? Also, when it comes to the adwiya uh, al-qadariya, that which the doctors and others see fit, that it's, it's specialist. They will tell you the, the cures and the, the thing that they see to be the case. But there are things that the scholars of Islam took from them and mentioned them. For example, if you read the Kitab Ibn Abdul Rahman Nasir Sa'di wrote, Al Wasail al Mufida fil Hayati Sa'ida, he mentions some of those Al Adwiyat al Qadariya. For example, from those things is, and the scholars mention it is, Hasmul A'mali fil Hal, wa Tafarrughi lil Mustaqbal. Do not procrastinate. One of the things that causes people stress is that they leave their work to the last minute. And then, oof, where do I start from? What do I do? This is, a, this is why you're stressed. Get rid of the work that is outstanding and finish it now. So you're free for the future. You can take, get everything done and dusted. The third one is, وَطَرْحُ التَّكَلُّفُ Oh, avoid يعني, doing things which are outside your ability. And you stick within your ability when it comes to doing virtuous things. Um, also, Choosing good things to do, productive things to do, They're very important. The next one is Don't try to look for praise and recognition from other people. This is what happens online. A lot of the people who are public figures and online, whether they be Muslims or non-Muslim, all of that, they all look for recognition. And then what happens? The crowd, the, there's people in the comment section who tend to not like you. They have to say something. They've got something to say, right? So you were doing it for the people. You wanted the recognition from them and gratitude, but they're not giving it to you. So you become very distressed. But if you do it, if you did it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will never let you down subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah does not let down those who do righteous actions and work towards Him. Another one is العلم بأن أذية الناس لك بقول أو فعل لا تضرك وإنما تضرهم. This is another thing. What the people say or what the people do or what the people are, think of you is really not going to harm you. It's going to harm them يوم القيامة. It's very important. By the way, you think these things are شريعة شري and you're going to think, are oh, these not the شريعة? These are شرعي but they are practically being seen. If a person does it, he gets better. That's why we call it قدرية meaning it is Practice and you can see the results for it. You can see. The person will come back to you and say, Wallahi, I tried it and I saw a difference. I'm not like I felt before. I feel much better, more relieved. The people's speech or the people's action towards you, to remember it can't really ha harm you. Rather, the people sometimes they project onto you what they think of themselves. Like they, they f they're doing it because they're removing a stress that's on them. And they're re projecting it onto you, it's fine, no problem. But it won't harm you, inshaAllah ta'ala. Also reminding yourself the sh how short this world is. So whatever is happening to you right now, it's not gonna happen forever. It's gonna come to a time when it's gonna end. Rather, if it becomes more hard for you, the sh distress and the discomfort, then they say, Every time the matter becomes even more harder, the opening is very close. It's getting more. What's that object where it becomes very tight from the middle and then it opens from the other side? So from the front, it's actually open and in the middle is very tight and it comes very close and then after it opens again. That middle path where it comes tight is what you need to remember when hardship hits you very hard, that if it gets tighter and tougher, then the opening is very close. You're going to leave now, inshallah ta'ala. Another thing that I feel like is very beneficial is the places you go to. It helps to stress. For example, students of knowledge trying to read in places 
and inshallah ta'ala uh, we're going to mention some of those points is trying to study and learn in greenery places i used to sometimes go to the countryside and i would finish a kitab a book or two it's very beneficial it's places which are sufra the scholars they say yellow because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he speaks about surah al-baqarah allah said something subhanahu wa ta'ala he said baqaratun safra ulawnuha tasurru nadirin underline the word tasurru what color was the cow allah mentioned it's yellow right safra ulawnuha sah tasurru nadirin the people who look at it it brings them happiness those kind of colors they bring happiness. وَلِذَلِكَ If you look at the tafsir of that ayah, Abu Hayyan al-Andalusi in his tafsir al-Bahr al-Muhiq, he mentions that. It gets rid of sadness. So maybe having يعني, flowers in your house is very good. If you, if you live in a country, for example, like ours, where there's not much greenery because of the country, because of the country, sand a lot. So then maybe bring some greenery into your house. Another thing is, إِتِيَانُ zawja. If you're married, intimacy. Intimacy helps towards distress. وَلِذَلِكَ أَبُوا الْفَرَجِ بِنُ رَجَبٍ He mentions that رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَلِذَلِكَ Being single causes more distress But having a, a spouse, a partner to be intimate with It removes some of that stress The body relaxes and releases itself Ibn Rajab mentions this رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Another one is archery الرَّمِي It has an أَثَر فِي ذِهَا بِالْغَمِّ وَالْهَمْ Ibn Al-Qayyim in his kitab Al-Furusiyyat Al-Muhammadiyyah he mentions this, that when a person learns archery, the Ibn Al-Qayyim goes as far as saying that the archery, room, it's like the distress goes into the archery and it flies with it. So it removes his distress and discomfort. Also, Lubsul Fidda, wearing Fidda. Ibn Al-Qayyim mentions that in Zadul Ma'ad. Wearing Fidda, it actually brings out, for example, wearing rings that are Fidda. It's very good. And for women, gold. Yeah, for women wearing gold removes removes distress. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah mentions that in his kitab Zadul Ma'ad when he when he speaks about the prophetic medicine. Also, another of the anwar and the azhar and the atiyar and the mulihah and the alwan and the hasana, colorful things, having things which are very colorful and looking at those things, it brings happiness. Suyuti mentions it rahimahullah in his kitab Al Shama Al Sharifa. All of these things, brothers and sisters, they help. To remove what? Distress. وَلِذَلِكَ Even certain types of noises, forests, people listen to, right? Rain, 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 rain forest. It, it calms them down and makes them feel calm. It does work. Um, certain people, they spend time watching to certain objects moving sideways or all of this. It's also something that, يعني, it's adwa al qadariya. It's from the what? al adwa al qadariya that is being proven. Now I'm going to go into 20 things that students go through that are distressful when it comes to seeking knowledge. 20 of them, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to mention the cure. The first one is the issue of sincerity. This is going to carry on from the beginning to the end. It increases the more you learn. Which is sincerity, brothers and sisters, everyone who's seeking knowledge is scared and terrified that what he's doing is showing off. Is it, am I sincere or am I not in seeking my knowledge? And brothers and sisters, I just want to remind you something. The only people who know showing off are the sincere people. In other words, they're the ones who are consistently reading about it and learning about it and avoiding its paths and its methods. So if you see yourself, inshallah ta'ala, always questioning yourself, then inshallah ta'ala, you're on a good path. When you say, I'm not, I'm not showing off. I'm doing this for the sake of Allah. That's when it's worrying. So, that's when it's يعني, worrying. What is it that you should do when to seek knowledge? You have to look at four, four main intentions. Every single class that you go to, every book that you read, every time that you're seeking knowledge, you need to know that your four reasons you're learning. The first one is to remove ignorance from yourself. Number two, your learning and your intention is to remove ignorance from other people. The third one is to preserve, to preserve knowledge from uh, it becoming uh, forsaken. And abandoned. And last but not least, to act upon that knowledge. That's what the poet, he said, Before you seek knowledge, remember these four. Keep it in your mind. 
فلتقصدوا أربعة قبل ابتداء تعلم لكي تفوز بالهدى أولها الخروج من ضلالي والثاني نفع خلق ذي الجلال وثالث الإحياء للعلوم ورابع العمل للمعلوم The four I just mentioned To remove ignorance from yourself To remove ignorance from other people To memorize and preserve knowledge And to act upon the knowledge that you have Okay my brothers and sisters This is something by the way All scholars of Islam were fighting And they were consistently fighting against Which is showing off وَلِذَلِكَ مَعْمَرُ بْنُ رَاشِدٍ He said كَانَ يُقَالُ It was said by scholars إِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَيَطْلُبُ الْعِلْمَ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ A person will seek knowledge for other than the sake of Allah فَيَأْبَ عَلَيْهِ الْعِلْمُ حَتَّى يَكُونَ لِلَّهِ Knowledge will say no No Let's do it for the sake of Allah Finally it will kick in my brothers and sisters Ibn Rashid's statement مَعْمَرُ بْنُ رَاشِدِ statement Thahabi comments on it And he said عَلَى مِنْ نُوبَلَى And he says نَعَمْ يَطْلُبُهُ أَوَّلًا The person when he first seeks knowledge He's doing it for what? حُبُّ الْعِلْمِ He loves knowledge Or حُبُّ إِزَالَةِ الْجَهْنِ Or he just loves the idea of just wanting to remove ignorance from himself وَحُبُّ الْوَضَائِفِ Sometimes people do it for jobs There's a position They need this knowledge And he goes and he does it وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ عِلْمُ وُجُوبُ الْإِخْلَاسِ فِيهِ And he doesn't know the sincerity That is needed from him وَلَا صِدْقُ النِّيَةِ And he doesn't know the truthfulness towards knowledge فَإِذَا عَلِمَ حَاسَبَ نَفْسَهُ But the more the person seeks knowledge And the more he comes to know The more he learns to account himself And question himself وَخَافَ مِنْ وَبَالِ قَصْدِهِ And he starts to fear The evil of his actions فَتَجِيءُهُ النِّيَةُ الصَّالِحَةِ Then the good intention starts kicking in كُلُّهَا أَوْ بَعْضُهَا Maybe all of the good sincerity comes in Or some of it comes to him So the, don't stop seeking knowledge brothers and sisters Do it for Allah's sake and carry on If at the beginning you're not right And your attention is bad Keep on the path, inshaAllah ta'ala. And this, by the way, is a distress that you will feel for the rest of your life in da'wah. The second distress is You're scared and you're always stressful about whether you're going to be guided to the path of knowledge. You keep thinking, am I, am I going to gain yeah, any knowledge? Am I on the right path? Am, am I doing the right thing? You question yourself all the time. Is this the right way? And we spoke about this issue which is الجهل بالطريق وآفاتها والمقصود يوجب التعب الكثير مع الفائدة القليلة We started the entire series with what? The importance of a methodology So Alhamdulillah I believe at AMAU The AMAU Academy The Student of Knowledge Program Inshallah ta'ala This issue of يعني, having distress when it comes to يعني, The path of the methodology of seeking knowledge I think insha'Allah ta'ala, there's nothing to worry about in this regard. Insha'Allah ta'ala, this is something that's been set for you and it's there bi uh, al kareem So in terms of the methodology, the way that insha'Allah ta'ala, it's going to be done it will, by knowing the methodology, and we've already spoken about that, walillah alhamdu wal minnah, in the second video insha'Allah ta'ala, of the importance of seek, uh, in the importance of methodology, and also Sheikh Muhammad Tim Humble, hafizahullah wa la'ah, is also going to speak about the methodology that the student of knowledge goes through at AMAU. Uh, so that, inshallah ta'ala, if you watch both of them together, it will benefit you. But the scholars they mentioned, when it comes to methodology, and you want to seek knowledge, there are two main important things you need to observe. There are two main important things you need to observe. Okay? When they are vital for you to reach the goal that you're trying to reach. Uh, if you don't get that, you're going to, you're going to suffer. You're going to, you're going to have a hard time from attaining it. And that is to have a, a knowledgeable person to teach you. You need a teacher who, uh, who knows what he's doing, uh, who has struggled, has gone through hardship. He's murshid. يُعَرِّفُكَ مَرَاحِلَ الطَّرِيقِ وَمَنَازِلَ الْقَوْمِ وَمَوَارِدَ مَائِهِمْ He will take you to the right places. The, 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 he knows the methodology and he's really done that. And this is based on the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu where he said, Tasma'una wa yusma'u minkum wa yusma'u mimman sami'a minkum. The hadith of Imam Abi Dawood narrated it on the authority of Ibn Abbas and wa isnaduhu qawi. The second uh, thing that, uh, you, that you need when it comes to uh, seeking knowledge is a, a strong methodology. A strong method. You have a qualified teacher and you have strong methodology. This uh, distress, inshallah ta'ala, won't be a problem. The third distress is هم صعوبة العلم The knowledge seems very hard You don't think you can do it You're struggling 
these levels that have been done marahil al ilm wa madarib qaumihi you're struggling marhalatul ula marhalatul thaniya thalitha you're struggling you think it's very hard i just want to say to you the quran is the foundation of islamic knowledge right and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he spoke about it he tells us how easy the quran is wa laqad yassarna al qur'ana li dhikri fa hal min mudakkir that the quran allah says it's easy and it's simple for the people so the quran is simple and the sunnah is a revelation also from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also simple. So the knowledge is really easy. It's just that you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help and you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's support. Um, with a, a clear methodology, with a clear structure and with inshallah wa ta'ala the teachers who uh, know, it will be very easy. وَلِذَلِكَ عَلِي بْنَ بِطَالِبٍ actually said الْعِلْمُ نُقْطَةِ كَثَّرَهَ الْجَاهِلُونَ Knowledge was actually just one dot. The ignorant people made it many. And what he's trying to say here is that knowledge was very easy, it was very simple. It's just that other people started to say unnecessary things and then it became, yeah, and respond to that, clarify that, this and that, and it became a lot. And to remove this distress, inshallah ta'ala, the way that we've done it is that you're going to start with the most important sciences that you need to know with the correct yeah, uh, steps and the correct books. The second is that we're going to focus on the small books before we talk about the many books, the big books, the, the, the detailed books. We're going to go through the summarized books. Al-Mutun al-Sigar. Okay? And we're going to, inshallah ta'ala, tell you what you need to memorize from those books. Uh, we're also going to not focus and we're not going to, dis, yani, uh, we're not going to th uh, put you through uh, the uh, energy of having to read big books. We're not going to burden you with all of that because that's going to be heavy on the heart. We're going to grab you by the hand. We're going to walk you through knowledge, inshallah ta'ala. But what we do need from you is that you give the advice and the steps that we give you. Take it very serious. And inshallah ta'ala, that distress will be overcome. The fourth one is The fourth distress that student of knowledge tends to, tend to see is that you find so many different people teaching. Sheikh Fulan, Sheikh Fulan, Sheikh Fulan, and Ustad this and Ustad that. You see so many different teachers teaching you. And this sometimes, many of the times, distresses a student of knowledge. So the student starts to become confused and he doesn't know which one to start with and who should he study, study with and who should he learn from. Look, you need to study with anybody who's qualified, who has the knowledge. He's known for having knowledge. He has also sought the knowledge. Uh, he has malak, a qawiyya. He has grounded understanding and is a ground, grounded foundation. The second is this teacher, he has yeah, and he, not just a knowledge, because that will by itself won't be beneficial. He has salahiya to hari shaykh li ikhtida'i wa lihtida'i wa ma'rifatuhu. He has a high level of Yani discipline and mannerism, akhlaq and all of that which you can benefit from inshallah ta'ala. He can be a good role model for you. You can benefit from him in the way he carries himself and the way he is. That's also another thing that you choose the teachers based on. So if the teachers are many, pick the one who has more knowledge and also he has high level of implementation of that knowledge. And with that inshallah ta'ala, it will narrow down the many figures out there. The fifth, inshallah ta'ala, is the fifth distress that student of knowledge will feel is hammuz diham al The sciences are too many. Okay? And inshallah ta'ala, we have a, a pathway that you are going to be idhnillahi al kareem go through. We've structured it all for you. We've organized everything, where you start from, what you do, what you don't do. We've set everything for you. If you take that advice, inshallah ta'ala, again, this distress won't be a problem. That all the sciences that are there, it won't confuse you. You also have the option, whatever's convenient for you. Some people, they love to study many sciences at the same time. You can do that. Some people, they find that very distressful and very uncomfortable with that. They love to seek every science by itself. They don't want to study many sciences. And there are scholars who actually believe that opinion. مثلا al-Zabidi in his Sharh al-Ihya, he mentions when it comes to the ayah, الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَتْلُونَ وَحَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ He said, أَيْ لَا يَتَجَاوَزُونَ فَنًّا حَتَّى يُحْكِمُهُ عِلْمًا وَعَمَلًا 
فيجب أن يقدم الأهم فالأهم من غير إخلال بالترتيب زبيد سيزة تدي آية الذين أتيناهم الكتابة يتلون حق تلاوتي means he said أي they don't go to one science without mastering the science that, that they're in so they finish this one they master it then they go to the next they master that one they go to the next and then master that they don't put their legs in too many different sciences and some scholars believe that this is a view of the poets from the Shalaqita, for example. They say, وَإِن تُرِدْ تَحْسِيلَ فَلِّنْ تَمِّمَّهُ وَعَنْ سِوَاهُ قَبْلَ الْإِنْتِهَاءِ مَهُ وَفِي تَرَادُ فِي الْعُلُومِ الْمَنْعُجَاء إِنْ تَوْأَ مَا نِسْتَبَقَى لَيَخْرُجَاء They say, if you want to seek knowledge, then take one science at, uh, uh, after the other. Do not take them all at once. Okay? Just like a mother, if she was carrying twins, she'd have to let one child out first before she takes out the other child. Okay, so all the both the children can't come out at once. So, inshallah ta'ala, we have selected and we have picked the important books that you need to study. We've chosen Thalatat al Usul, Al Qawaid al Arba, Al Kitab al Tawid, Kashu Shubuad, Al Arba'un al Nawawiyya. We've chosen Yani Kutub al Fiqh Shafi, Matabi Shuja'a. We've chosen Yaqut al Nafis. We've cho cho chosen Al Zubad. We've chosen Umdat al Salik, Minhaj, Nukhbat al Fikr, Al Waraqat, Mukadim Shi Usul al Tafsir, Al Ajur Ramiya, Al Rahabiya, Bulu al Maram. Books like that you're going to study. Different sciences with different books. A nice set, organized program, inshallah ta'ala, that you're going to benefit from. Bi'idnillahi al -kareem. So, the, and we've set a pathway for each and every one of them. So when you study those sciences, we'll tell you which one level you should finish first, what level you shouldn't finish first, which one should you start with. We've suggested everything for you. But some people might say, that's not comfortable for me. That doesn't work for me. I prefer taking so many sciences together. Uh, I enjoy it. I relax from that. I love to take this one, take that one, take that one. I like it. No problem. Like the British school systems in America as well. You take many sciences at the same time every day. So yeah, some people like that. Uh, inshallah, that's also open uh, for you as well. The, the sixth distress that students of knowledge go through is Hamu the Durus. The many classes that are out there. Okay. Um, and they're kind of contradicting each other. So there's like this class that you want to be there, but then on the same same time, there's another class that's also happening at the same time that this class is happening in, and you're like, oh no, I want to be at both of them, but I can't go, I have to choose one. This also causes distress to the students. And Alhamdulillah at AMAU, uh, the Student of Knowledge Program, inshallah ta'ala, there isn't this problem. When Sheikh Tim is teaching these classes, I wouldn't be teaching them. When I'm teaching them, he would. So we don't have this problem in the sense where these classes, inshallah ta'ala, you can watch them anytime. Sheikh Tim's classes are there, my one are there, inshallah ta'ala, and you can go to each and every one of them and there's no ta'arub. There's no like this class, I want to be in there, but th this class is going over this class. It's not. It's recorded for you and you can go and watch it at your the most convenient time, inshallah ta'ala. So this distress, alhamdulillah, there won't be that problem, bi'idnillahi al kareem and you'll benefit in that regard, bi'idnillahi uh, al kareem The next distress that students of knowledge tend to have is the issue of, the distress of hammul hifz al ilmi wa fahm. Understanding knowledge and memorizing. As you know, when it comes to seeking knowledge, there are two main things that are needed from you. You have to have a high level of memorization, and you need to have a high level of comprehension and understanding. Okay, you need to have a high level of memorization and a high level of understanding. And so students are like, when do I memorize? When do I understand? When do, what do I memorize? What should I not memorize? So listen, take it easy, inshallah ta'ala. Remember these three fundamental advices, inshallah ta'ala. Number one, you have to know what you need to memorize. And inshallah ta'ala, you don't need to worry. We've prescribed for you, we've written for you. The books that we suggest that you memorize, inshallah ta'ala. We've broken the books that you should memorize in the AMAU Student of Knowledge Program into two, inshallah ta'ala. Books that are for the people who have high aspiration, who really want to go to the limits, inshallah ta'ala. We've suggested a, a, a book for them. The person who says, look, I do want to memorize in this particular science, but I can't go for these vast, you know, detailed books. I want to do a small, basic book. We've also suggested a small book for them to memorize. Some of the subjects we didn't do that. What we did was we selected the portions that we need from these big books that you need to memorize. So 
you don't have to worry about what should you memorize or not. We've already يعني, written that for you. Okay. Also, what is it that you need to understand? Again, you don't have to worry about that, which is the second uh, fundamental advice. You understand the most important يعني, topics that you need to understand. Everything we're teaching in the introduction, you have to understand every one of them. Some videos, my brothers and sisters, I'm going to be honest with you. Some videos, you're going to have to go over it again and again and again, maybe four or five times. That's fine. That's why you go according to your own taste. The third one is knowing how to keep the things that you memorized. How do I hold it down? And how do I hold down the way that I've understood this class? I want to keep it in my head. I don't want to lose it. These three, inshallah ta'ala, if you get them, don't, you don't have to worry. There's no problem or issue for you which is to know how to keep what you memorize or to keep what you've understood. Does that make sense? The last one, which is how do I keep what I memorize and how do I keep what I've understood? It all goes back to revision. Inshallah ta'ala, we're going to give you an I, yani a plan of how to revise, what not to, re, what, what, what to revise, how, what time to revise. All of that will suggest it, inshallah ta'ala, for you. Bidni lahi kareem. Uh, and when to, what times to memorize. Uh, I'm going to touch on some of them, inshallah ta'ala, in the fifth video, inshallah ta'ala, or the fifth episode. I'm going to talk about that, inshallah ta'ala. What do you memorize? How should you keep that memory there? What do I need to understand? And how do I keep that understanding in? Brothers and sisters, anybody who wants to understand and memorize need to un understand these three things. Ma'rifatul mahfuzati al-lazimati li talib al-ilm. And knowing what is it that a student of knowledge needs to memorize. Second one is ma'rifatul mufumati lazimati lahu, knowing what is it that I need to understand. Three, knowing how to keep that information I memorize, how do I keep it in and not lose it? Because I exerted time and effort in it. Also, the things that I've understood in these classes, I want to keep it with me. I want to always be able to understand it and not forget it a few months later when I look back at my notes and the class, I'm like, what was the teacher saying? I don't want that to happen. I want to be able to understand it. How do I do that? Those three, the answers to them is what will remove this, this, uh, this distress. As for what you need to memorize, as I said to you, we, inshallah ta'ala, AMAU, we've already written the way and how and what you need to memorize. And we, inshallah ta'ala, Sheikh Muhammad Tim Humble Hafizahullah is going to explain that to you. You're going to have to go to his video. The second thing that I, in terms, uh, in terms of what you need to understand that, we've written the curriculum for you and all the books that you're going to do with us. Okay, and inshallah ta'ala, the madkhal, which is the introduction for all of the science, that is a key for the understanding. If you do good in your madkhal, the introduction, every book that comes after will make sense to you. Because يعني, it's the foundation for it. The madkhal is a foundation. It's a foundation level. It's the key. The third and the final one, which is when you what you memorize, and what you understand, all of this, inshallah ta'ala, it goes back to revision, it goes back to time, it also go back, goes back to place. So a lot of revision, going over it again and again and again. A few days you have to go through it. Number two, the time that you memorize it. You can't be doing it at a time when you're fatigued and you're exhausted and you've come from work and you've done a 95 shift and you now want to memorize. Maybe do it before you go to work, when you wake up in the morning, an hour before you leave. And the third one, inshallah ta'ala, of how, what you memorized, what you understood, how do I keep it in? It goes back to revision. Brothers and sisters, that's vital. It goes back to the time that you're going to memorize. So if you've got a 95, uh, 95 job uh, and you want to memorize and you want to understand, and after you come from work and you're exhausted and you're tired and you come home and you say, look, I have to memorize my lesson before I go to it. Maybe that's not a good time, right? Maybe you should do it when you wake up in the morning, you pray Salatul Fajr before you go work, you use that chance to memorize and etc. Okay, the place that you memorize. Some people want to memorize it in the living room where all their kids are running around and etc. That doesn't work. So it all goes back to these three things when it comes to memorization. Rev revision, consistency or continuation and going over it, re revising it many times. It goes back to the time and it also goes back to the, the uh, place. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَانِ مُحَمَّدٍ مُشَابِ الزُّهْرِ He said, إِنَّمَا يُذْهِبُ الْعِلْمَ النِّسْيَانِ وَتَرْقُ المذاكرة. And what makes you forget knowledge is, or makes knowledge go, 
what makes knowledge perish and go is forgetting it and not revising it, right? There's a cause for it. The uh, eighth uh, distress that students of knowledge go through is طُولُ الْمُدَّةِ فِي الطلب. Some of you are going to see, which is the eighth uh, distress, that you look at this and you say, wow, how many years is this going to be? We say to you, for example, 10, 15, 20 years, and you look, you're like, whoa, wow, this is not for me then. This is a lifetime commitment. This is all my life, every day I have to. This is a distress that students of knowledge go through. Instead of looking at what it is after 10 to 15 and 20 years, why don't you look at focusing on now and today what you need to learn. That's how you overcome this distress. Don't keep looking at the ending and the finish line. Just look at what you're at right now, what you're doing and focus on that. Okay. They say, if you're scared, scared of heights, and you're walking on a, a rope or you're walking on something, a bridge that's over, a, say, a forest, for example, and you're scared of heights, they tell you don't look down, right? Because if you do, you're going to start getting scared and you're going to panic, right? So this one, it goes back to the student keeps looking at, oh no, so 10, 20 years after I'm going to be doing this book, oh, this is going to be... The curriculum, inshallah, I've written for you, some of the books we didn't, we, we appreciated when it came, but we didn't focus on, we didn't focus on the books and that we were going to study. Yeah, we were not, we were appreciating the one that we're in right now. We'll come to the other one, inshallah ta'ala. We're going to come to it. Um, and that's inshallah ta'ala important. And if you look at the great scholars of Al-Islam, their biography will help you as well to overcome this distress. Malik rahimahullah said, كان الرجل يختلف إلى الرجل ثلاثين سنة يتعلم منه العلم. That one man or a scholar or a particular scholar would go to one scholar to take knowledge from him for 30 years, not 10 years, not, not 5 years. We're talking about brothers, يعني 30 years. Al-Tabarani rahimahullah, the author of the, the Ma'ajim, Thalatha, they asked him, بما أدركت العلم? How did you reach knowledge. How do you gain good knowledge? He said, I was sitting on يعني, the ground, legs, my, my legs were crossed. I was seeking knowledge for 30 years. That's where I got all of this from. Ya'qub ibn Sufyan, he said, Ya'qub ibn Sufyan, Sufyan he said, I traveled to gain knowledge for how many years? 30 years. ولذلك هذا مفتي بفوز شيخ عبد العزيز بن لباز هذا الشيخ العلامة محمد بن إبراهيم آل الشيخ رحمه الله تعالى uh, he said um, about his teacher uh, محمد بن عبد الرحمن آل الشيخ uh, um, he's uh, يعني one of the great scholars he talks about that he read in فقه عن حديث عن تفسير العقيدة 35 سنة 35 years he was studying فقه Hadith, Tafsir, Al-Aqeedah. How many years, brothers and sisters? 35 years. And for us, we want to go to a crash course. We want to two weeks, two weeks, Dora. And we want to be masters in that short time. Look, inshallah ta'ala, you'll get there. Just be consistent and continuous and you'll see results, inshallah ta'ala. The ninth one is, which is what I just mentioned now. Hammu ta'akhuru dhuhuri athar al-ilm. The person's in our program, inshallah ta'ala, signs up, studies maybe for three months. After three months, which is, why did I say three months? Because three months, they say it's a probation, probation period. Majority of the people, they drop out after three months. The person signs up, hyped up, full of energy, sees this book being mentioned and that, and they get excited and etc. After three months, they don't see a lot of changes in terms of their knowledge. They say, I haven't really uh, reached a high level. And so they become distressed and they go sudden tighten chest. And they say, look, I can't do this. And he leaves the studying and learning. Look, I want to say this is similar to the halu zurra, the farmers. When the farmers are, يعني, they're planning to, they're, they're winning, they're, they're working towards planting seeds in the, in the earth in order to get vegetations. First of all, what do they have to do? What they have to do is they have to toss and turn the earth upside down. صح? And they have to get rid of all of the unpleasant 
seeds and anything that are in there. So you need to get rid of all of the unnecessary stuff. Okay. After that, and when the earth is good in sh good shape and they've put the right uh, seeds, sorry, the right soil there, then and only then do they start planting the seeds because the earth they believe is now ready. Sometimes that's what knowledge does to us. It takes time. It was our hearts are getting cleaned first before that knowledge starts dropping into our heart and starts growing. Okay? So it is affecting you, but it's just working on your, <coughs> your heart, your mind, as cleansing you. The second thing is, a lot of people only focus on knowledge in the term, in, in the, in, when they look at it, I haven't learned anything. But has it increased you in actions? Be honest. There's athar ilmi and there's also athar amaliya. Has it increased in your heart al khashya, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Has it also made you self aware of yourself? Has it also taught you the importance of certain things that you thought were not that important? Then that's what suffers. You've gained something, you've benefited something. Knowledge does two things, brothers. It does takhliyatul qalb. It cleanses the heart from all the dirty things that are in it. That takes time. And then after that, does it do tahliyatu al qalbi bil fadaili wal kamalat? Then and only then does it fill the heart with beneficial, virtuous things. Okay, my brothers and sisters, pay attention to this and be aware of this. The tenth distress that students of knowledge will see is that we're going to be mentioning many books. So a lot of students are going to be distressed with when it comes to compiling books and creating your own library. This is something students tend to find. Brothers and sisters, if you want to let, if you want to get books, you have to follow the, the you have to follow these advices. And I want you to pay attention to this. Number one, give importance to the books that are considered mutun, which you know you're going to read on a teacher. In other words, get the books that we're going to be teaching you in the uh, Madrasat al umariya the Student of Knowledge program. All the books, inshallah ta'ala, the curriculum is, is going to be available for you, inshallah ta'ala, to see. All of those books, buy them, because you know you're going to study them, inshallah ta'ala. Not only that, get a sharah for it if you can. And inshallah, we're going to suggest the best sharah for you to look at, look at inshallah ta'ala. So that's number one. These are books that you know you're going to learn straight away. So, بتحصيل المتون التي تقرع على الشيوخ ومهمات الشروحي. This is number one. The second one is buying the books that are considered الأصول المهمة. They're called الأمهات. Like books that you know are considered reference, reference point. Like صحيحين بخاري المسلم. كتب الستة جنو بخاري مسلم أبي داود ترمذي ابن ماجه النسائي. Get those books. As a student of knowledge, those books are considered ummahad. Tafsir ibn Kathir, Tafsir ibn Jirid Tabari, they're considered يعني, reference points. Zaid ibn Ma'ad by ibn Al-Qayyim, considered a reference point. Al-Bidayah uh, wa Nihayah is also considered a reference point. So those books are called Al-Usul Al-Muhimma by those books. The third one is Muhimmat Al-Kutubi Ba'd Al-Usul. After the fundamental books, you buy important books that the scholars have said, you need this book. For example, al dawa al-Dawa ibn al-Qayyim. It's not considered min al-Mutun, it's not considered from the Mutun, or it's not considered the, from the text that you're going to read on a teacher. But it's also a very important book. It talks about the sins, it talks about the illnesses and its cures. You know, that's a vital, important book. Kutub that, uh, inshallah ta'ala, that you, inshallah ta'ala. But for us, inshallah ta'ala, Da'wah al-Dawa is actually part of our program. You're going to be studying them anyway, so it's part of our curriculum. But any books that are not part of the curriculum, that it's good for you to buy. Like for example, in our curriculum, you're not going to be studying the Kitab Ma'alim al-Tanzeer by Baghawi's Tafsir. Buy that, it's a very good book, it's very beneficial. It's actually a reference point when it comes to Tafsir and etc. The fourth, inshallah ta'ala, is buying books, okay, um, that are after you study the sciences. You've, mashallah, studied with uh, us for like a year, two years. You've done a good study. You buy books. The books that you buy, brothers and sisters, this one's smart and you have to be clever. The way that you buy it is based on the funun, the sciences. So for six months, you focus on only buying books related to fiqh. You spend all your money on fiqh books. Then after that, you spend your money on all the books that are uh, aqidah, for example. And although you focus on all the books of hadith, 
you focus on hadith specifically, you have to narrow it down what you mean by hadith. You mean mustalah al hadith, you mean ilal al hadith, you mean tarajum al rijal. What do you mean in hadith? Shuruh al hadith. You specifically narrow down what subject or what fun or what science that you want to buy the books for, and then you start buying it. Those three, sorry, those four foundations you have to be observing. Number one, for now, when you start at AMAU Student Knowledge Program, don't buy unnecessary books and spend all your money on books you will not be using in the next few years. Focus on the curriculum books that we're going to teach you. Buy all of them, inshallah ta'ala. And we're going to suggest for you the best publications for it. The second books are, once you've studied a good portion with us in terms of the curriculum, you start buying يعني, المهمة, the fundamental books that you're, you know you're going to always have to go back to for reference, like Bukhari, Muslim, Abi Dawood, Tirmidhi, Ibn Majan, Nasai, etc. You go to Kutub Zad al-Ma'ad by Ibn al-Qayyim, Tafsir al-Mukathir, you go to Tafsir al-Jari al-Tabari, you go to Al-Bidayah wa Nihaya. These Kutub are Usul al-Muhimma. After that, third one, which is, you go towards books that are important, but they're not part of our curriculum. They're not part of our curriculum. We're not going to be teaching you them, but you, it's good to have those books. They should be present in your, in your library because it's vital. Uh, it's after the usul, and it's a very important books that you need to have, okay? The fourth one is buying books in terms of sciences. Now you're, mashallah, you've done our first uh, marhala, maybe the second marhala with us. Uh, you done the matqal, then you done the first marhala, the second marhala, all, all the sciences. Now we, sh we say every six months you focus on a science. So you say, inshallah, for the next six months, all my salary and money I get, inshallah ta'ala, Whatever savings I would have made, I'm going to focus on building my library based on a science. Aqeedah is all I'm going to buy. Or I'm going to buy fiqh, hadith, tafsir, and etc. And every six months you're focusing on that science until you finish nearly all the books you can possibly think of for that science, the majority of them. That, inshallah ta'ala, will overcome the distress that you go through when it comes to buying books. So many people are buying books and then they're buying books in the wrong way. They're buying bad publications. They're buying books which are ripped. Pages are missing from it. Number, the, the, the 11th distress that students of knowledge go through is how do I combine between al madrasatul nizamiya I go to Medina University, for example. Somebody might say, I've been studying. I'm studying at University of Medina or I'm studying at a secular uh, university and I go to your AMAU. Or I'm in India and I'm studying in an Islamic university or I'm in this country and I'm studying at an Islamic university but I want to be part of your program because the curriculum and the things that you guys are going to be teaching is not available for me in my country. How does that person combine between the, the, the university structure and the, uh, the AMAU uh, online and service that we're doing inshallah. How do you, there's a lot of contradiction that happens to students. So I stop my university now, shut it down, leave it and stick to the AMAU Institute? Or should I uh, uh, not worry about studying AMAU Institute and just focus on my uh, al madrasatul nadamiya Simply, the real answer I'm going to give you is to combine between the two. To combine between the two. And not to leave one for the other. And the reason why I say this is because this similar situation occurs to the students who are in Medina, who are studying with the ulama. They say, shall I stick to the ulama and study in the halaqat or shall I study at my university? If I study at uni, sometimes it might affect my jam, my, uh, it might affect my, uh, my university. It might affect my university. So what do I do in this situation? The advice I want to give you is that you need to do two things. If you know that you go to an Islamic university, and you're currently studying, but there are some subjects and some science, maybe you're even secular sciences. You're studying a very good subject called medicine, for example, or engineering, which is good, very beneficial. But you also want to be part of the AMAU Institute. And the content is, is being, it's online. I want to be part of it. I want to study it. What do you advise me to do? I would say, because they are all pre-recorded, you can go according to your pace. So when you get holidays, like you have ijazat al-dirasiya, you have, for example, summer holidays, winter holidays, you have Easter holidays, you've got this holiday, that holiday, you benefit from those holidays. You Back to back, you study at the uh, AMAU Institute. You finish your subjects, you're studying, you're learning. 
Weekends, for example, you're doing yours. You're studying on your weekends, okay? Um, and then the second one is once you've graduated from your university, now you have achieved that secular sciences that you were studying at, or even maybe uh, al madrasa, uh, maybe al jamia islami, or this university that you were studying at. You finished it and you graduated from it. Even then, inshallah ta'ala, it's still beneficial for you in doing it after that. By studying it after that. Well, it is mentioned that Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah, he uh, never studied ilm al-qira'at except when he reached the age of 80. He was busy with other sciences, by the way. He could only have come to that subject at that age. So 80, imagine that. 80, he's studying the different modes of recitation of the Qur'an. Now I want to go into the 12th uh, distress that students of knowledge go through, which is the... You have a lot of demand, chores in life that you have to do. There is izdihamul mutatallabat. So there are a lot of things that are upon you. For example, your parents are old, they need you. For example, you have a wife, you have children. Uh, maybe your, your health is not that good. Uh, so there's many things that are yani, in your life that's very, very yani, exhausting and it's taking your time. How do I overcome this? I'm, I'm stressed about this. What I want to say is, First of all, you have to understand that these responsibilities that you have, you have to fulfill them. For example, your nafs has rights on you, your family have rights on you, your parents have rights on you, your neighbors have rights on you, your wife has rights on you, your children have rights on you. Everyone has to be given their rights. That's number one. Number two is that you have to organize and structure that responsibility. So who is the most rightful person to you? Your parents, for example, you write that down, number one. Then who comes next, and then who comes after, and then who comes after. So then you give each person their rights based on that. So this is important. Tartibul huquq, you organize the level of rights that the people have on you. Okay? And you give each person their rights. Once you write it down, and you designate time for every single one of them, you would find that that you have actually got what? A lot of time to do things for, for yourself. You realize, you'll find that out. Because a lot of the people who say, I've got so much responsibilities. When COVID happened and they had to work from home and they were, a lot of responsibilities were taken from them. They didn't perform when it comes to certain things that they said that, I couldn't do it because I have to drive there to come back, this and that. With COVID, a lot of people didn't even have to work at all. They were getting paid without having to work. And some people, they got two, three hours off their time from commuting from one place to another, but they still weren't able to produce when it comes to their religion. They were not able to do certain things that they wanted to do in life. Still saying, I'm still uh, busy. So I just think it's Adam Tanzim al waqt You really haven't organized your time. And you're not really giving a lot of consideration to your time. The 13th, inshallah ta'ala, is the person is seeking knowledge and he has no, he's distressed when it comes to knowledge and calling to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like what I've learned, do I have to start preaching it? Do I have to go out there and teach? Look, brothers and sisters, Da'wah ila Allah wa ta'ala happens on different levels and different scales. And there's no better person than the one who calls to the path of Allah. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُوا قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِنَ الصَّالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Knowledge is the key to it. Insight of the religion is a key to when it comes to da'wah. That's why Allah says, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ so no doubt, as soon as you learn a knowledge in a matter, you need to do da'wah. La shakha wa la rayb. But on what level do you need to do da'wah? It depends on your level of knowledge. As a beginner student of knowledge, you're still doing uh, the mad'akhil. You're doing the introduction level in al-madrasat al-umariya. You're doing the beginner level. You haven't really reached that high level. Putting yourself out there in order to give knowledge, it's going to be counterproductive. And you're going to lose out. 
إِلَىٰ كُنْتَ تَبْنِيهِ وَغَيْرُكَ يَهْدِمُ You're going to open yourself to other people to uh, show jealousy and animosity towards you when you could have avoided it by not putting yourself out there. Also, um, another factor or another thing is if you take those positions, you're not going to stick to the things that you know. You're going to be pushed and pulled into things you don't know. And then you feel ashamed of not knowing it, so you might be, you might be you know, tempted to answer those things. And then you throw yourself into destruction. You fall maybe under the eye of Allah. May Allah protect us. وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَصِفُ أَلْزِنَةُكُمْ الْكَذِبَ هَذَا حَلَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ لِتَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ لَا يُفْلِحُونَ Allah Tabarakut Ta'ala says, don't be like those people who describe Allah Tabarakut Ta'ala as, Ta'ala's religion by saying this is halal and this is haram, haram lying. They have no knowledge. They speak with no knowledge. Also Allah says in another ayah, وَلَا تَقْفُوا مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادُ كُلْ أُولَئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولَةً Don't speak about a matter you have no knowledge of. You'll be questioned about what you say the day of judgment. That's what the ayah tells us. Also Allah says in another ayah, قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْإِثْمَ بِغَيْرِ حَقُ the last part of the ayah says that you speak about Allah which you don't have no knowledge of. قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْإِثْمَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَأَنْ تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ To speak about Allah in that which you don't, have, you don't have no knowledge of. So the point I'm trying to say brothers and sisters is that a da'wah to ilallah at the beginning of seeking knowledge is I mean on a higher scale, a larger scale. لا شك if you learn something go home teach your family your wife your children educate them educate your neighbors and all of that around around you about the certain things that you learn لا شك as a دعوة إلى الله but to put yourself forward and to then preach and teach this comes with more than just يعني knowledge of certain things it requires as I mentioned الرسوخ you have to be grounded to a level you also have to have بصيرة insight of matters okay that also has to be uh, has to be there. So that distress of to when do I start preaching? When do I start teaching? Am I going to be from the people Allah says in the Quran? Yeah, who conceal knowledge, who withhold knowledge, and don't share it with the people. Allah says uh, in the Quran. In Allah says in the Quran. وَإِذَا خَذَ اللَّهُ مِثَاقَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ لَتُبَيِّنُنَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَكْتُمُونَ Allah took a covenant with the people of knowledge that you will clarify the matter to the people and you will not conceal it. So someone might say, I'm scared that I might fall into that. Or I might fall into the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said about the person who conceals knowledge, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Man su'ila an ilmin fakatamah. Anyone who's asked about a knowledge on a matter, fakatamah, and he conceals it. Uljima yawm al qiyamati bil jami min nar. There will be a braid on it, will be placed on their mouth, which would be held uh, around their neck because of the knowledge that they concealed. So the point, brothers and sisters, is. This distress, inshallah ta'ala, wouldn't be a worry for you in the sense your teachers who are teaching you, your instructors, your asati that will inshallah ta'ala tell you what you should and shouldn't do once you put that question towards them inshallah ta'ala. Once you advise, take their advice, and Imam Malik rahimahullah, he said, I never gave fatwa, I never taught, I never said anything until I consulted a large number of the scholars in Medina. Okay. So now inshallah ta'ala, I want us to go into the 14th distress, just distresser that the student of knowledge indoors, which is Hamun nafaqati wal qut. One of the deceptions of shaitan on the soul is that it scares and terrifies the person when it comes to finance. A student of knowledge is like, I need money, I need to make money, I'm struggling, I don't want to be uh, financially uh, low, I want to be able to sustain myself. So shaitan terrifies the person, scares the person. And a lot of people, they pick distress and tiredness from this. Uh, it, what shaitan also does is that إِعْضَامُ مُحَبَّةِ dunya, And he increases in your heart the love of the dunya. And then the shaitan benefits from that. So the students like, I can't seek knowledge because I need this much money. In order to repel this, you have to understand that your soul and your rizq is all in Allah's hands. The way that you're gonna, your soul is going to leave your body the day Allah wants it to be is the same way when it comes to your rizq. Allah says in the Quran, 
وما من دابة في الأرض إلا على الله رزقها There is no beast, there is no creation, there is nothing that walks on the face of this earth except that their provision is written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, الْيَقِينُ بِإِعَانَةِ اللَّهِ لِأَوْلِيَائِهِ you have to always remember Allah is going to aid and support those who He loves, subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ السَّاعِينَ فِي حِفْظِ دِينِهِ Allah is not going to forsake a person who is striving to protect his religion, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُعَادُونَ Your risk is in the sky. إِنَّ اللَّهُ هُوَ الرَّزَاقُ ذُو الْقُوَةِ الْمَتِينَ Allah is not going to forsake you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? You need to remember that. Don't stress too much. If you make the dunya your ultimate goal, you're going to be stressful. The Prophet ﷺ, he told us in the hadith of Zayd ibn Thabit radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that Zayd I heard the Prophet ﷺ is saying man kanati dunya hammahu anyone who makes the dunya his ultimate goal farraq Allahu alayhi amrahu wa ja'ala faqrahu bayna aynayhi wa lam yatihi min ad-dunya illa ma kutiba lah Allah will place poverty in front of your eyes because you made the dunya your ultimate goal and you're not going to receive from this dunya except that which was written for you وَمَنْ كَانَتِ الْآخِرَةُ نِيَّتَهُ But anyone who wants the akhirah, that is his intention. جَمَعَ اللَّهُ لَهُ أَمْرَهُ Allah will bring your affairs together. وَجَعَلَ غِنَاهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ Allah will make contentment in your heart. He'll make you rich inside. وَأَتَتُهُ الدُّنْيَا وَهِيَ رَاغِمَةُ The dunya will come to you on its knees begging for you. The dunya will present itself to you. Also having good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Lord who didn't forsake you in the womb of your mother when you were not working for it. Why would he forsake you now that you are working and you're striving for it? Are we all together, brothers and sisters? The poet, he said, Why is it that poverty has distressed you and caused you hardship and hard uh, headache? And your whole entire mind and heart is stressed over this, uh, this issue of poverty. أَحْسَنَ فِيمَا مَضَى The one who was good to you in the past, you have to remember, يُحْسِنُ فِي الْبَاقِي مِنَ الْعُمْرِ He's going to take care of you of the remaining of your life, inshaAllah ta'ala. Allah is going to take care of you. Also, take the efforts and the hard works to attain money. يعني, it doesn't mean you seek knowledge and you totally abandon when it comes to looking for risk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَإِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَبْتَقُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ when you finish the prayer, Allah didn't say just stay there and don't, and don't do anything else. Allah then says, فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Strive on the earth. يعني, go out and spread and disperse on the earth and look for what? وَبْتَوُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ Look for the provision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, تَعْرِيفُ النَّفْسِ بِأَنَّ مَا تَحْتَاجُ إِلَيْهِ مِنَ الرِّزْقِ مَا هُوَ مَا يَحْفَظُ قُوَّتَهَا وَيَسُدُّ حَاجَتَهَا You have to know that the Provision that you're looking for, you're only taking the amount that your body needs, not excessive and more. And who am I? You take as a student of knowledge the amount that will give you quwa, strength, and that which will take care of your need. If a bread, a bread can take away the hunger, take the bread. Don't busy yourself with I need meat, I need this, and I need that. Ibn al-Wardi rahimahullah in Islamiyah, he said, Mulku kisra anhu tughni kisratun wa'anil bahri ijtiza'un bil washal. He says the kingdom of kisra, what suffices you from it is a piece of bread. Yani, uh, it was Harun al-Rashid once was asked, if you, he said to a man, give me advice. He said, I'll ask you a question. Harun al-Rashid and Harun al-Rashid said, what is the question? He said, the question to you is, if it happens that your whole kingdom is requested from you in exchange for a water you are thirsty for, you're extremely thirsty, you need that cup of water, okay? And, but you have to pass, uh, you have to give your kingdom for it. Would you do it? Harun al-Rashid said, of course I would. There's a cup of water which determines your life and death, your body needs it, you're dehydrating. You're about to die. You need that cup, nice cup of water. But you pass over your kingdom. All of it and everything that has. Harun al-Rashid said, yes, I would. The man, he said, mulkin, Destruction be to a kingdom. La yusawi. That's not even equal to a cup of uh, water. 
And a cup of water is more valuable than it. Does that make sense, brothers? ولذلك أبو عمرو بن العلا, the great scholar, he was an imam في اللغة and an imam في القراءات. He said, دع الهم بالرزق يا غافلا فربك منه لنا قد فرغ. He said, يعني leave off stressing over provision, O you who is heedless. فربا it is possible. فربا sorry, فربك not فربا. فربك منه لنا قد فرغ. Allah has already finished with this. يعني your provision and what is what is its issue. فما لك منه إذا مفتركت بعقل صحيح سوى ما مضع. Some of the copies they say فما لك منه إذا مفتكرت بعقل صحيح سوى ما مضغ يعني why haven't you thought with a correct mind and everything other than just thinking of what you're use your brain and think and produce things don't think about something I want to bite I want to eat this all day وجاز التراقي بلا مانع وفاتك بالجوف لما بلغ فدع ذكر دنيا تبدت لنا كسم الشجاع إذا ما لدغ يعني this was very يعني consistent on the tongue of who? Abu Amr ibn al-Ala rahimahullahu ta'ala. And also the يعني, reality is that so many people are working towards fulfilling their body and abandoning fulfilling the soul which is in more of a need. The 15th distress is إِعْفَافُ النَّفْسِ بِالنِّكَاحِ This is the biggest one. Brothers are like, I want to get married or I want to seek knowledge. Sheikh, what do you advise me? Since this is the same thing. Is it marriage or is it uh, seeking knowledge? And as you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the fitrah of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, which is maylu jinsi nisa ila rijali wa maylu jinsi rijali ila nisa. The men that went the women, the women that went the, the men. Allah created them subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the student of knowledge, while seeking knowledge, he gets distracted and distressed and sad. He doesn't, he wants to seek knowledge, but he, he has the desire for a wife. And the, yani the ukduba al shaytaniya is that, Yani, if a person seeks knowledge, uh, if a person marries, yani, uh, he can't seek knowledge. Khalas. No doubt it becomes hard, but he can seek knowledge. Especially if certain things happen, you seeking knowledge can be easy whilst married. For example, if a brother is really, really, really full of desires, and all the time he's thinking about uh, his desires and how to fulfill it, he won't be able to memorize, nor would he be able to understand. His brain, his brain is preoccupied. So when he marries a wife, that stress and that desire that is burning him and frying him and roasting him is going to go as soon as he gets married, right? As soon as he gets married. So then the, the, the marriage for him is very beneficial. But the person, brothers and sisters, who doesn't have these desires should not try to create this for themselves. Because it's better for you not to have no burden, then some burden, right? So if it doesn't come to your mind, you don't have even you don't even have that desire, actually benefit from your time and seek knowledge. But if you're distracted and the desires is burning you, then go for marriage, inshallah ta'ala. It will release that tension, it will release that uh, feeling and that distress. It will remove it from you, inshallah ta'ala. But remind and uh, rem sorry, and I should remind you, and you should also remember, which is Marry a, a righteous wife and sister, marry a righteous brother. If you're seeking knowledge, sister, marry a brother that's like minded. Brother, marry a sister that's like minded, who's seeking knowledge, who wants to uh, seek knowledge with you. Okay? Um, also, another thing you need, brothers, is that if you do get married and uh, you have a wife, uh, you have to have ihsanu siyasati ri'ayat ahwal al bayt. The situation of your household, you have to control it in a way where you can, you, you can go and seek knowledge now. But if it, the house is all a mess, you're not going to be able to seek knowledge because you left everything as a mess and the wife is onto your case and everybody's onto your case and you can't really free your time for seeking knowledge. So if you do get married, the same applies to the sister. If you want to study and want to memorize and everything, first of all, fulfill the responsibility of your husband and the responsibility of your children. And then inshallah ta'ala, Keep that time for your seeking of knowledge, inshallah ta'ala. Um, also, finding a person who is, or if they're not, they're a good person, bring them on board with, with what you're doing. Musharaka fi talab. You and I, come on, let's do it. We can do it together. Let's 
go out and do that together inshallah ta'ala also remind your partner whether it be the what sister reminding the brother or the brother reminding his wife always remind each other about the virtue of knowledge and what you're going to get for it inshallah ta'ala okay another thing i say to brothers is that if your wife is helping you seeking knowledge then always remember tahadu tahabu buy a lot of gifts appreciate sure appreciation for what she's doing for you because that will inshallah ta'ala support and it will help you bi uh, al karim the 16 inshallah ta'ala distress that students of knowledge encounter and see is hamu islah durriya the distress of my children and this inshallah ta'ala is similar to the previous point which is you have to do the following things first of all you have to organize your time when it comes to your family and your seeking of knowledge Number two, you try your best to bring your family on board with what you're doing. So it's not just something you're doing by yourself. Another thing is dawamu dua ilahum bis salahi wal hidayah. Make dua for them all the time. That Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, He takes care of them and He preserves them. Also choosing a wife who's going to help you in this. If your wife is an obstacle, the children are going to go astray. Your offspring, your children are going to go astray. Okay, uh, so this is vital, and inshallah ta'ala, it's important that you take it on board. The 17th, inshallah ta'ala, which is Hamur Rukuni ila dunya. Every now and then, the shahwa that Allah created with humans starts to kick in. The dunya becomes glamorous and glitters to you. See that, as Allah says in the Quran, Zuyina lin nasi hubbu shawati min al nisa'i wal banina wal qanatiri al muqantarati min al dhahabi wal fiddati. Sometimes you go to a circle, you meet certain people, they're well off, they're financially, they'll say, come let me take you to the dars, you're a miskin talib ilm, you haven't got much, and they take you in a Lamborghini. And you're like, wow. And then maybe this might, it might cause that. Abdullah al-Dariyu, he said, كان أهل العلم بالله والقبول منهم يقولون إِنَّ الزُّهْدَ فِي الدُّنْيَا يُرِيحُ الْقَلْبَ وَالْبَدَنْ وَإِنَّ الرَّغْبَةَ فِي الدُّنْيَا تُكَثِّرُ الْهَمَّ وَالْحَزَنْ وَالْبَطَالَةَ تُقَسِّ الْقَلْبَ وَتُغَيِّرُ الْبَدَنْ Allahu Akbar Abdullahi al-Dari used to say that the scholars and the people of knowledge they used to say the people Allah loved and appreciate يعني Allah loves them and accept their acceptance on this earth they used to say إِنَّ الزُّهْدَ فِي الدُّنْيَا يُرِيحُ الْقَلْبَ وَالْبَدَنْ to be aesthetic and be detached from the dunya it actually relaxes the heart and the mind and the body. And the, having that passion and that desire for the dunya and wanting to run after it, to kathirul hamma wal hazan. It increases the distress and the hardship. Wal batala, laziness, where you're just sitting around and doing nothing now. To qassil qalba, it will harden your heart. Wa tughayyirul badana, and it will physically harm your body. Your body will change. You become fat, out of shape, you're tired, you're fatigued, etc. That's what will happen to you, okay? Some of the scholars also said, إِنَّمَا يَحْسُلُ الْهَمُّ وَالْغَمْ مِنْ جِهَتَيْنِ التَّقْصِيرُ فِي الطَّاعَةِ وَالْحِرْسُ عَلَى الدُّنْيَا Distress, sadness, depression, all occurs from deficiency in your obedience and running after, running after the dunya. So the dunya, brothers and, brothers and sisters, running after it will destroy you. And this characteristics, brothers, of يعني الطمع والحرص Get rid of that when it comes to the dunya. كَثْرَةُ الْحِرْسِ وَالطَّمَعْ تُورِثُ الْهَمَّ وَالْخَزَنِ أَمَا وَالْجَزَعَ It increases in you. Ibrahim ibn Adam used to say, always running after the dunya and desiring the dunya and longing for the dunya. تُورِثُ الْهَمَّ وَالْجَزَعَ It will bring into your heart distress and يعني, uh, sadness and all of that. Al-Harrani used to say, أَكْبَرُ الْهَمِّ وَالْإِهْتِمَامِ إِنَّمَا هُوَ مِن طُولِ الْأَمَلِ Having a long life, thinking that, sorry, thinking you can have a long life in this dunya. This dunya is very short. It's ayam ma'adudat, as Allah said. A very short period of time. Not going to take too long. The uh, 18th distress is the hamu hal al muslimin. You're seeking knowledge, you're learning. And then you see the situation of the Muslim around the world. And this causes you hardship. And you think, what can I do about it? How do I deal with this issue? This is causing me a lot of problems. Remember, um, 
in order for you to change the situation of the Muslims, you have to first of all build yourself. Charity starts from home. If you've built yourself and you've mashallah grounded yourself and you've gained understanding of your religion, you've, you've worked on your right, your actions and you've come with righteous actions, that contributes to the rectification and the change of the ummah. It does. Are we all together, brothers and sisters? If you look at many great scholars of Al-Islam, they rectified and they changed things through teaching and education. That was a form of changing. For example, Al-Allama Nadir Hussein al-Dihlawi, the great scholar of India, and he's from one of the shiukhs of Sa'ad ibn Hamad ibn Atiqin and Ali ibn Nasir, Abu Wadi, and all of those, the Saudi scholars. He was their teacher. The British colony, when they came to India, they put him in prison. And they kept him in prison. And he used to say, for me to remove the harm of the Muslims by the British is by me teaching Sahih al-Bukhari. And he taught Sahih al-Bukhari, even though he was in prison. He would teach the prisoners this. He finished the teaching of Sahih al-Bukhari, rahimahullah. وَلِذَارِكَ النَّذِيرَ حُسَيْنَ الدَّهَلِّوِ إِلَّا They call him Shaykhul الْكُلِّ فِي الْكُلِّ The man was something else when it comes to uh, knowledge. وَلِذَارِكَ Today, if you get an ijazah, just one person between you and Nadir Hussein al-Dihlawi, your ijaz is very short. Are we all together, brothers? The 19th is uh, desiring leadership when you haven't really reached. This is also another distress students go through. They want to be something, but they haven't done anything yet. I want to remind you of the statement of Umar al-Khattab. Tafakkahu qabla an tusawwadu. Before you become leaders, قبل أن تسودوا means أي تصيروا سادة Before you become leaders and in charge, تفقه My brother understand and my sister understand the religion inshaAllah ta'ala. The student of knowledge, um, the distress that majority of them go through in this, in this particular uh, one is that a beginner student or person who's in the middle the uh, distress enters him from two places. Number one is wilayatul imamati wal adhan. Is that he wants to be the imam of the masjid. So he's a beginner, he was in the middle. So he wants to lead the salah, he wants to do the adhan, this is one. The second one is wilayatul ta'lim fil madaris al hukumiyati, for example. He wants to be a teacher now, he wants to sit in the masajid. He wants to be given positions and jobs and things like that. So the students, this happens to them. And the haq is, if you are trying to achieve something and you hasten it before it's time, you'll be prevented from it. Okay? Not to mention that sometimes this could be a reason for you to not carry on seeking knowledge. Because are sometimes hard to, for you to reconcile them. It's really hard for you to reconcile between the two. So that's why Umar ibn Khattab used to say, تَعَلَّمُوا قَبْلَ and to sawwadu, seek knowledge before you take what? Before you take a position. Bukhari came after Umar bin Khattab and he said, wa ba'da and to sawwadu. And even after, when you gain knowledge, you still have to seek knowledge. It's not just not before that only, but actually even after you do. The last and the final uh, distress, which is the 20th, is hammu tasaddi wal ifada. Okay, I kind of mentioned it, which is, the person coming forward to want to benefit the people. It's another distress that student of knowledge goes through. My brothers and sisters, the life of the student of knowledge is two. It's waqtu tahammulin wa akhdi lil ilm and the other, the other one is waqtu adai wa tabligh. The time when you take and the time when you give. Spend more time in your life in taking than giving. That's logical, right? Money, people do that with it, right? They take more than they give, right? How could you not do that with knowledge? Take more knowledge than what you get time to teach other people. Why? Because you want to be precise in what you learn. Precision of knowledge is vital. So in order for you to learn, uh, sorry, to preach, your, non, your, your level of knowledge should be high. Because some of the great scholars of Islam, it's known that they died and there was no one who learned certain sciences from them because they couldn't find the audience for it. I'm going to stop there inshallah ta'ala um, and I'm going to end it there inshallah ta'ala Allahumma nafis qurba al-makroobin 
وفرج هموم المغمومين واقض الدين عن المدينين وأصلح أحوال المسلمين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وعملا صالحا وإيمانا زائدا ويقينا راسقا اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من عبادك الراشدين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم احفظ بلاد المسلمين اللهم احفظ بالمسلمين قائمين واحفظ بالإسلام اللهم احفظ بالإسلام قائمين واحفظ بالإسلام قاعدين واحفظ بالإسلام نائمين اللهم احينا على الإسلام والسنة وتوفنا على الإسلام والسنة اللهم هي لنا من أمرنا رشدا واجبر كسرنا وارحم ضعفنا واستر زلاتنا وكفر سيئاتنا واغفر خطايانا وتجاوز عما سلف لنا من أمرنا وهي لنا فيما بقي من عمرنا صلاحا في أقوالنا وأحوالنا وأعمالنا وذرياتنا اللهم إنا نسألك بركة في نياتنا وبركة في ذرياتنا وبركة في أعمالنا وبركة في أقوالنا وبركة في قواتنا وبركة في أقواتنا سبحانك ربنا سبحانك ربنا سبحانك ربك رب سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين I'm going to stop there inshallah ta'ala subhanak Allahumma bihamdi ashhadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk